What's up? I'm architect Drew Paul Bell, and today I want to make a little announcement video talking about the fact that I now live here in New York City. And I'm actually recording this right now in Washington Square Park. This is only like 15 minutes away from where I live. I live in one of the best parts of the city in a neighborhood called Nolita, kind of between Soho and Little Italy. Um, moving to New York has been a huge dream of mine, and this is something that I have not talked about on the channel before because I felt like I kind of had to keep it under wraps. This was something that I wanted to execute on and get it done before really like telling everybody this is what I was going to go do. Um, but I've always known within myself that this is what I what I wanted. Um, I've all, I always say that like I, I kind of felt like I had two items that were like number one items on my bucket list. One of those was to become a registered architect. And as you, if you've been watching the channel for, for a little while, you know that I actually accomplished that goal last year, last year in June. I made a little video announcing it. I was trying to kind of come back and start posting more videos. But even as I was making those videos, I knew that I still had this other number one item on my bucket list, and that was moving to New York. And so I, I knew that I still had to kind of prioritize and execute on that other major goal to, to move up here. So I wanted to make sure that I kind of fill everybody in here on this YouTube channel because like I've been a little quiet on YouTube for the last year or two because I've had some major goals I've been working towards. But uh, I felt like I, I kind of had to make that sacrifice. I had to focus on this one thing because that's the advice that I give to people. It's advice that I give to you here on these, on the, on this, on these videos. It's that you need to like know what you want and then go after those things and let all the things that are like not that number one thing you have to sometimes let those go on the back burner and you have to be willing to sacrifice those other that other stuff in order to accomplish like those number one goals of yours as soon as i learned that there was a city like new york that was like the biggest city i immediately knew that was where i wanted to live when i grew up and i grew up in this mostly in this kind of boring boring town in, in middle georgia and i didn't realize how boring it was until i was in about the seventh or eighth grade because we were always back and forth between Charleston and Warren Robins. My grandparents still lived in Charleston, and we'd be back there like half a dozen times a year. And in our in our trips back to Charleston, I would I would find myself like really loving Charleston, and I, I would just think like, why why is Charleston so awesome, and Warren Robins is just not. Warren Robins was just so boring. And in honesty, it was like during this time I started formulating like my very first ideas about architecture because it caused me to sit back and think and realize that you know. In Charleston, like they have sidewalks, they have a they have a downtown. There's no downtown Warner Robins. The idea is laughable to like anybody who actually lives there. It's kind of like there was no real city planning. It was like the smallest town that had an air force base, and then everything kind of blew up. They had lots of people come in. And I realized that um, you you could be critical of the city you lived in. That certain cities are going to offer certain opportunities that other cities would not. And I knew that there were certain opportunities that a city like New York was going to offer me that cities like Warner Robins just never were. And somewhere along the way, when I made that decision, I decided that I wanted to, um, I, I started talking about moving to New York. I started telling people about this. And then I had all these people around me telling me that, no, no, you don't want to live in some big city like New York or Atlanta. They all come back, you'll see. And I was dumb enough to listen to them for a little bit. You know, I thought that I looked up to some of those people and I might have respected their opinion a little bit too much. But as I grew older, as I visited New York, as I moved to Atlanta, I went to college right outside Atlanta, I knew that like some people are meant to live in big cities and some people are meant to live in small cities. And I'm the type of person who's meant to live in a big city. So I had to really like, I had, I've lost a lot of respect for the idea of other people's opinions about what I'm supposed to want and what I'm not supposed to want. And I bring this up because it, it ties into a lot of my message with this YouTube channel, right? Is that you need to know what you want and don't listen to other people tell you what you're supposed to want. Um, you know, you know what's for you. You know, I kind of thought that like college was going to be my way out from the small town I lived in. I wasn't very happy with, but then when I got to college, it was it still wasn't the social experience that I wanted. So there again, one more time, I found myself in a situation that wasn't really the right environment for me. So what I did in college was I put my head down and I, and I worked really hard for like five years to get out of that small, to get out of that small university. And like it was like my final spring break of college. I flew to New York and I, I tapped my professors for contacts. I came up here during my final spring break and I, I went to the AIA Center for Architecture like every night. I walked my resume into half a dozen offices. I bought people lunch and coffee and all that. And they all told me the same thing. They all said, look, go back to Atlanta and work in Atlanta for a few years. And within a few years, 
uh, working in the field in Atlanta, you'll learn more than you learned at all of your years in college. And I didn't want to listen to that. And in my head, I, I still didn't listen to it. Like, that's actually what I ended up doing. But it wasn't until like a year later that I kind of woke up. I was like, oh crap, sh I, I did exactly what they told me to do. And I thought I wasn't listening to them. But when I graduated, I was still applying to jobs up in New York. I was working from my working from the connections I had made from online back at my parents' house in Georgia, and nothing was really coming through, and nothing was coming through in New York. And after a month or two, I decided that you know I needed to at least halfway focus on Atlanta. So, I within two weeks of looking for jobs in Atlanta. I had two interviews, which led to two job offers, and I ended up working at a great firm in Atlanta that was like a very, it was an award-winning design firm where I got to work on amazing houses, and I really feel like I, I ended up at the firm where I belonged, and even though, that wasn't, even though it wasn't New York, I felt like that was where I was supposed to be right then, so I, I, I enjoyed my time at uh, that firm, Robert M. Kane Architect, and I worked there for four years, and then it was last, it was last June, right now it's May 2000. 19, and it was like last June that I finished getting my license. Once I had the license, uh, that was like, you know, one of the number one items on the bucket list. I had to get the other one. So then after I got the license, then I had to prioritize and execute on getting the job in New York. So it was a few more months of like um, making contacts, applying to jobs up in New York, doing a few Skype interviews, and um, I finally got the job where I'm at now. I got offered a job at Mer Meridian Design Associates. And we do mostly like corporate interiors. We're doing um, offices for people like media companies like CBS, NBC, um, CNN, and it's a really cool experience. I'm very happy to be here, and I, I know that like as soon as I say I'm from New York, as soon as I say that I'm in New York, like a lot of people kind of they have some resistance. Some people are are not fans of New York. They think that they can't live in New York. And it's like that's fine. Um, my my the interesting thing for me growing up was always that like. I was never trying to convince someone else that like they needed to come with me to New York, but for some reason it seems like a lot of other people were telling me that like I had to agree with their opinion to like live in some small city, and that's not my thing. That's not my thing. I'm I'm very open to the fact that there are like different types of people who want different types of things, and there's some people who are meant to live in like big cities, and we need some people who are meant to live out on farms and grow and grow food for people who are willing to live on top of each other, right? In in big cities. Um, but yeah, so all this just to say that like I'm living in New York now. I, I love it here. I'm having a lot of fun, and it's so far it's just gotten better. It's, got, it's gotten better and better. So um, hopefully we're gonna see some more videos here on this YouTube channel. I'm working on that. Um, I'm gonna be speaking at a conference in uh, Portland, Oregon, with Michael Rosica at the Young Architect Conference. And uh, don't forget to check out that stuff in the links down below. Um, follow me on Instagram at Drew Paul Bell, and we're gonna keep the show on the road we're gonna keep rolling so uh don't forget to check out my my youtube my uh, my instagram and don't forget to like subscribe and share if this video if you enjoyed it and you're interested in getting more info on uh succeeding in architecture school and transitioning into the workforce so i hope that this video helps and i will talk to you next time